the introduction to security operation. Let's look at the uh, four words. In the current information age, uh, security is the most foremost concern of global enterprises, which is very true. The, uh, the threats of cyber attacks and also the data breach means security operations are a necessity to ensure the safe and continuous use of enterprise services. Okay. Um, so these slides will describe <coughs> the basic uh, concepts and also the prerequisites of the uh, security operations. Right, so let's look at the objective. Objective is um, we will learn the concept related to security operations. We also will learn the contents of security operations. Okay, so here are the, uh, the two parts. Um, so we will talk about the concept security operation and we talk about basic requirements for security operations and after that we talk about the, uh, the, the contents of the security operations. Alright, so first let's look at the uh, concept of security operations. In the initial stage of uh, enterprise information security construction, the enterprise's priority is to purchase a series of security device, devices and deploy them at each protocol layer to ensure the stable running of the services. Okay, so I think uh, this is very true. Uh, most of the organizations uh, are currently aware about, you know, they need a firewall uh, to be to, to to place at the front end, and the firewall are typically the 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 machine that's you know facing towards the internet, and uh, there are so many threats coming from internet. So from there we can actually perform uh, some filtering, right? Um, as security issues uh, frequently occur, effective security operations cannot be achieved solely solely through security devices such as the firewall. Uh, a successful security operations are the combination of resources, processes, and also management, okay, and also the planning, and to ensure the secure and stable running of the enterprise services, okay. So um, for for modern days, we cannot just you know depend on one device like uh, a firewall just to to uh, to to assume that once we place a firewall, we are all secure. Uh, on for from all the threats, okay. Uh, maybe the next question is like, what about Wi-Fi? Okay, what about Wi-Fi? What about uh, the the Wi-Fi security in your organization, right? What about your server? Are they secure uh, within your LAN environment? Um, and also the um, how about your own uh, machine? You know, every single uh, devices of the user uh, are, are the the device uh, up to date in terms of the patches, the service pack, you know, or maybe in terms of antivirus, what about the, uh, are they up to date all the time, you know, and what about the, um, uh, the USB, you know, are they, uh, are they allowed to, supposed to use the USB stick, uh, to, to, to they can easily copy and out, uh, the information from the, the laptop they're using, the company's laptop, so all these are actually things that, uh, also to be concerned about, okay. Right. So next, we look at the uh, basic requirement for security operations. Okay. So here are actually a list. <laughs> right. So look at this. Security operation involve various requirements. So the following list are the basic operations condition for security operation. Okay. So there are many things to can consider. Um, so here we we split into uh, different type of uh, uh, categories. Um, so we have business continuity planning (BCP). Uh, we have physical security. Okay, so we we will discuss this uh, BCP in a, in a short while in the next few slides. Um, physical security is actually the uh, the one I just spoke about. You know, like for example, uh, physically who can access to your company's server. Right, so how did you secure the server uh, in terms of the maybe the front cover, 
uh, are people easily uh, able to open up your cabinet or are they easily can access your server can they easily pull out your hard disk or maybe your tape drive you know uh, all these are considered physical security and also the laptop itself you know if the uh, if the server is, is difficult to access so hacker probably would, would want to target the, the client machine so they will attack the client machine from the client machine then they will gain access to the server so what about if the laptop has been stolen right and what would be your risk when when the when your staff and one of the employee lose loses the laptop okay physical security so um then we also have the managing security operations and then we have also subcategory of here um incidents prevention and response um disaster recovery plan we will discuss in detail later um investigation and forensic okay um, so let's look at this part. Uh, managing security operations. So in terms of managing, um, we there are so many things to talk about, right? So we should configure a protection resources, right? So what other resources are we considered uh, to be protected, right? So you need to define, understand, and apply the basic security operation principle. Yeah, this is important. Uh, use the resource protection technology. All right, use whatever resources that we have, like as simple as antivirus and maybe the patch uh, update server. Right, so for Windows, we have the WSUS servers. Um, execute and support patch vulnerability management. I just mentioned this. Okay, and uh, some of the the antivirus software uh, they no longer uh, install just an antivirus agent on your laptop. Uh, instead, uh, they have this uh, new t term called the endpoint management. <laughs> All right, endpoint management. So endpoint management is actually uh, like uh, every laptop they're supposed to install this uh, endpoint agent. And uh, on top of the endpoint agent, you have the uh, uh, the antivirus engine and some of the, uh, uh, the antivirus. They actually even support more than one engine, one more than one scanning engine. Okay, uh, and also endpoint security also protects your USB um, peripherals. Okay, uh, also protects your Wi-Fi connection when you connect to some certain Wi-Fi. Uh, the endpoint en uh, agent will actually scan through and to assess whether the um, is is this a safe environment? Okay, or maybe some of the endpoint also comes together with the VPN. No matter where you go, once you're outside the office, you should actually connect back to VPN, back to the serve, uh, back to the company before you can access any other internet website. Okay, so that we can keep track and uh, to filter all the traffic. Um, participate in and understand the change uh, management process. Okay, this is very important uh, because uh, once you, you maybe you hire a, a security consultant to advise. Uh, the company, you know, the things have to change. Uh, you know, you can no longer use, for example, the USB drive, uh, or maybe you must have exclusive permission before you can use USB stick. Uh, you can, you cannot easily just use an administrator account anymore. If you want to have user uh, administrator account, you need to get permission. If you want to install any software, you have to get permission. Things like that. So this one. Uh, it's about the change process, okay, and also to ensure the personal uh, safety. Um, so, I mean, what about the incident prevention and response, okay? Uh, manage logs and to monitor behavior, okay? Uh, manage the logs, and uh, we also have server logs and also the client logs. Client logs will be the uh, the Windows laptop logs. So in Windows, we have something called the event viewer, okay? Uh, so manage the logs. So how can the administrator collect all the logs and also to monitor the behavior? So who access the, the server, who access the system, who actually try to penetrate our system, and all these are called monitoring behavior. Uh, and also implement the incident management. So just in case an incident happens, uh, what is the step-by-step uh, -step procedure to, uh, to uh, handle the issue? Uh, and also to perform and maintain prevention uh, measurement, okay, um, and also to educate the user, okay, what is what is the thing that should be done and what not to be done, uh, and then in terms of disaster recovery plan, all right, so disaster as we know, disaster means 
uh, in case there is a, a big, uh, let's say, earthquake or maybe big flood, you know, that probably uh, or maybe fire that break out in the uh, in, within the company, and you probably lose everything. So, what is your uh, recovery policy, and uh, how do you execute the disaster recovery, and uh, the plan? How do you execute the plan, and how do you test the disaster recovery plan? Uh, even though there's no disaster happen, that you should actually from time to time test your uh, disaster recovery practice. Okay. And um, also investigation and forensic. Okay, um, understand and support the uh, survey and understand the requirement for investigation and also forensic. Yeah. So for example, if uh, if one of the machine has been uh, attacked by somebody by a hacker, right? So maybe some of the information has been stolen, right? It's just, this is just like a ordinary uh, crime scene, you know. Some of the things that you are not supposed to to touch it, or uh, maybe you want to hire an uh, expert, right, to to come over and uh, to to scan through all your e equipment, or maybe if uh, the equipment has been touched by somebody, you know, they may need to do some fingerprint scanning. You know, I, I'm I'm referring to the real fingerprint scanning, <laughs> right? So all these are actually things that you need to um, be prepared about. Okay, so that concludes uh, my session. Uh, thank you.